Good evening. We hope you're all having an absolutely wonderful Christmas. We've got a marvellous show for you. There's the, the Kirov State Ballet, the Moscow State Circus, the Ukrainian State Dancers, the Leningrad Philharmonic Orchestra, and the massed bands of the Red Army. And as an encore, we were declaring war on Europe. And for those of you who like a bit of peace and quiet, we've got the mass choirs of the Noise Abatement Society singing Silent Night. But first, the news. The BBC announced today that there will be a special fortnight of special programmes in November to mark the first anniversary of its 50th anniversary. <laughs> in the Commons yesterday, Mr. Willie Hamilton held up a piece of mistletoe and said the price was a disgrace. 226 members shouted shame, 193 shouted hear, hear, and 12 kissed him. <laughs> and the Croydon girl, who had her clothes torn off during a bring and buy sale in the church hall, arrived home last night suffering from shock. Her father, an upholsterer, rushed her to his workshop, and today she is reported to be fully recovered. <laughs> the governor, the governor of Parkhurst, has announced that five maximum security prisoners today sat down to a Christmas dinner of turkey, stuffing, roast potatoes, Brussels sprouts, and Christmas pudding with brandy sauce. However, efforts to recapture them are still going on. <laughs> And shooting on Ken Russell's new film, musical film, A Night on a Bear Mountain, was held up last week when Sir Rafe Richardson walked out after Mrs. Mills had refused to take her clothes off. <laughs> As a special Christmas goodwill gesture, a well-known British petrol firm is offering an extended play gramophone record of American Indian ghost stories for only three new pence. Just ask for the BP, 3P, Creepy, TP, EP. <laughs> We've been asked to make a special Christmas appeal on behalf of the Society for the Prevention of Rudeness on Envelopes. If you're opposed to rudeness on envelopes, send your money to this address. Pull your knickers down, Bristol FA3. <laughs> Here is a police warning. A consignment of talcum powder sold last week in the central London area contained baking powder by mistake. People who purchase the product are warned not to sit too close to the fire or they may break out in biscuits. <laughs> While at a London store, a sandwich board man stopped work as a protest yesterday after he had heard that the store's Father Christmas had been given the sack. Now, after it had been explained to him that the, Christmas, the Father Christmas had to have the sack before he could start work, the sandwich man was given his notice. Now, this in turn angered the Father Christmas until it was explained that the sandwich man had to have his notice to carry around the streets. Afterwards, the Father Christmas agreed to take the sack, providing he wasn't given his notice, and the sandwich man agreed to carry his notice, provided he wasn't given the sack. <laughs> the solution to this item will be given later in the programme. <laughs> but first, a sketch. Starring Mr. Ronnie Corbett, who is now appearing in, in Aladdin and his wonderful lamp, playing the part of the wick. <laughs> Mr. Ronnie Barker, who is now appearing in Robin Hood, playing the part of Sherwood Forest. <laughs> so let's now consider the state of the party. Hello. Hello. What do you do? I run like hell. <laughs> no, I mean uh, for a living. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant, uh, what do I do when I'm attacked by a giant vampire bat with great black flapping wings screeching and tearing at my throat? No, no, no. no I just meant uh, for a job, you know. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm a solicitor. Oh. Well, that's, uh, that's very interesting. Interesting? It's appalling. It's the most hideous, terrifying death in the world. No, I mean being a solicitor. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant being left in the graveyard when the vampire bats attack you, flying out of the white moon, screeching and tearing at your throat. No, 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 I just meant, is it interesting being a solicitor? Uh, well, it is, in a way, you know. I, uh, I had an uncle who was one month. God, no. Did they have to drive a stake through his heart? No, no, no. <laughs> no, he was a solicitor. Oh, oh, not a vampire? No. Oh, well, in that case, they wouldn't want to drive a stake through his heart, would they? No, definitely not. No. <laughs> would, you, uh, would you like another one? God, no, not another one. One's enough. Tearing at my throat. Another one would go for my eyes. No, well. I mean, I mean, would you like another drink? Oh, oh, yes, 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 I would. You would? You would what? Um, I would like another drink. Oh, I see. For a minute, I thought you meant you would have left him lying there in the pool of blood. No. Without a a any attempt to cover up the body at all. 
No, I just meant I wanted some more. You wanted some more. I wanted some more. Everybody wanted some more. The whole family. But he was a solicitor, you see. No, no, more Scots. More Sc No, no, Welsh. Welsh, little Welsh citizens. God, we hated him. No, hated him. No water. No water. No, I had to use old newspaper to mop the blood up. It was all <laughs> over the floor. It was all over the ceiling. And there was this little Welsh solicitor lying there with a stake through his heart. I don't, I don't really have nightmares about vampires. <laughs> I had to do it, you see. You do understand that, don't you? I had to do it. I had to. Oh, Oh, God, the blood, the horror. <laughs> I was just saying that about that part to, to, to make conversation. Yes, that's all I do it for. Parties get so boring otherwise. <laughs> oh, yes. Are you married? Uh, yes, I am. Oh.